All right, so in this video, I expect to find a lot of cool fish and some spectacular crayfish species. I am here with my buddy, Alan. You can kind of see him right there. But we're gonna be hitting a few spots in North Alabama and adjacent West Tennessee. A lot of these fish and crayfish I've already found before, so there shouldn't be much problem finding them again. But anyways, here are some of the cool fish that we found at our first spot. And also here is the zebra crayfish. So these are Tuscaloosa darters. I don't believe these are all the way colored up, but they do got some nice blue on their anal fins right there, on the edges of their caudal fins and on their chin below the mouth. They got reddish, yellowish caudal fins. Um, but a lot of these are males. Let's see if I can find a female. Like that one in the middle is a female. That one's also a female. And then these are the males. But similar to the green breast, uh, lipstick, and Etowah darters closer to home, they are in the same species group. But I'm just going to go ahead and let these guys and girls go now. And so here is the ever-present black banded darter. You see a lot of these in my videos, so I'm just gonna go ahead and let these go now. And so here are warrior darters. These are endemic to the Black Warrior River watershed. Um, they're not completely fully colored up, but they do have some nice color right now. Um, they got some blue anal fins, which are not really displaying. And some nice red bands on the both dorsal fins. There's some blue on the caudal fin also. But here's a male. There's another male and a female to the right. But gonna go ahead and let these go see if I can show that blue right there yeah it's kind of hard to show that yeah there you go there's some of that blue but yeah I'm gonna go ahead and let these go now and show you uh, one more fish and then I'll move to the crayfish. So here is a banded sculpin. These were super common at this spot, but as you can see, there is a lot of rocks here and sculpins love to hide under rocks. But I um, did see a lot that were much bigger than this. Uh, about half the size of this tank. But I didn't want to overcrowd the holding tank, so I didn't keep any of the bigger ones. But here's a smaller juvenile. And I'm just going to go ahead and let this go now. And so here is the reticulate crayfish. Vexanius ericksonianus. These are super common in North Alabama. You can even find them in North Georgia and a few counties. Um, but they're f found not only in the Mobile watershed, but also in the Tennessee River watershed. All right, so this is a Form 2 male. As you can see, the gonopods right there are not fully developed. They're kind of short, stubby, and they don't have much form to them. But they got a cervical spine right there. And like the spiny wrist crayfish, 
and the Coosa River crayfish, they got a spine in the middle of their maris right, let's see, right there at the base of their claws. So right there, they got three spines on their maris. Most crayfish have two spines on either side, but this and the Coosa River and the spiny wrist crayfish have that, that middle spine on their maris right there. So there is the cervical spine. Um, of course, they got marginal spines on their rostrum. So a very spiny crayfish. But gonna go ahead and let this little dude go. So here are two closely related species. Um, this one and this smaller crayfish are sloped crayfish. And then this really big crayfish is an ambiguous crayfish. So these are Cambarus obstipus, and then this is Cambarus striatus. And they get the name striatus because um, usually they have a striped pattern on their abdomen or tail, and it's really faint on this specimen. But you can kind of see it right there. But here's a, this is a good side-by-side uh, -side comparison. As you can see, the rostrum is different. And also the coloration. These have these red bands on their abdomen and red, orangish accents on their tubercles and rostrum. Um, this does kind of have some red on its rostrum. But the, of course, they don't have the red bands on the abdomen. But the rostrum is much more longer. It's not as squarish as in the ambiguous crayfish. So here's the ambiguous and the sloped crayfish. Now both of these are form one males. I didn't check that. Actually, I might have. That might have been a male too. So here is a size reference. This is the sloped crayfish in my hand. And then here is the um, ambiguous crayfish. So as you can see, it's a lot bigger. But I'm gonna go ahead and let these crayfish go. This was actually just chilling around in this pool and Alan grabbed it. I'm gonna go grab these. There you go. And so last but not least are these zebra crayfish. Um, both of these are males, but this younger one looks like is freshly molted which is why it's not as dirty as this one that is covered in silt. But this species is just so unreal looking. It looks like somebody bred this coloration, but no, this is what they actually look like. I am stoked to be able to see this species again. This is definitely one of my favorite crayfish. but I am gonna make sure that these crayfish go back under the rocks that they were found under. So letting this species go.
it'll find its way. Now I'm gonna go let this stunner of a crayfish go. Just so unreal looking. That is crazy. So we're at another spot and it got dark on us, but here is a really cool species. This is the blue face darter. Um, this was recently split from the banfin darter a couple years ago, so this is a new species. Um, this is only my second time seeing it, but I wanted to come back when it was in color. But as you can see, this one has some blue on its face, the other one not so much. But this one is the more brightly colored, even though it doesn't have as much blue on its face. Alright, and so check out these fish. These are blue side darters. And it looks like I came at the right time for them, just not the right time of day. But absolutely stunning, gorgeous little darters. Uh, their iridescence is actually shown off pretty well um, with these lights. But like, we got a majority of males here, as you can see. They're all males, except for... Here's a female right here. But here's a better look at these uh, blue side darters. Just phenomenal little fish. And so here, yeah, here's that female. But I'm gonna go let these go and that'll wrap it up for this spot. And tomorrow I will be hitting up Tennessee and I'm gonna try to hit up a few spots over there. Good morning. It is now the next day. And so me and Alan have checked out of the hotel. And so we're now at our first spot and we found a lot of cool crayfish and a pretty cool darter. So here are the finds. So possibly the coolest find at this spot is the hillbilly hairy crayfish, Cambarus polypylosus. Um, it's got some nice hairs, bristles on its claws, which is where it gets its name from, the hairy part. You can kind of see that. But it is a very small species. Here is my hand for comparison. This is a Form 1 male, so this is a full-grown adult. But this species lives in this kind of gravelly uh, substrate where they just bulldoze through and burrow into this kind of small rocky substrate. Um, so there's another s small species that looks like Dorelli, uh, the saddle crayfish. But all of these species are have to be really small to be able to live in this habitat because if they were big they would just get crushed but super cool find i am stoked to be able to uh, see that species it was a royal pain to photograph but got it done actually now it looks like it might be a better photo subject it's not moving around as much i said that too soon but I'm glad to have gotten that knocked out. And so here are some of the other crayfish. 
All right, and so these are saddle crayfish. Um, these two larger ones are form two males, and the smaller one is a female. They get about two or three times as big as this. Here is my hand for scale. Um, but pretty cool species, and I'm gonna go ahead and let these go now. Last species for this spot is the slender crayfish. Um, this is a form two male, and that is a female. But it's another small species, as you can see, my hand for scale. But it has uh, a pretty cool pattern to it. And it's another species that specializes digging in this gravelly uh, substrate. But gonna go ahead and let these go and show you some of the fish. All right, and so here is a black spotted top minnow. Um, you've seen these in my videos before. They are really common. Um, but gonna go ahead and let this go and show you the darter. That's really cool. All right, and so um, what is what I think is really cool are these guardian darters. Um, as you can see on their second dorsal fin, they got those tubercles, um, but those are to mimic eggs. So that is a really neat evolutionary trait. Um, these are all males. Um, that one in the back is pretty dark, but really cool fish. But this is the last fish that I'm gonna show you. I've um, got some other species, but they're juvenile, so I'm not gonna bother with photos or video. So, last fish, gonna go ahead and release. And this is the habitat that they were in. I'm um, just kind of in these rocks, gravel. But we're going to go hit up the next spot now. So me and Alan are at our next spot in Tennessee. We were just going to come here to see one darter and use this as a backup location in case we didn't see the hillbilly hairy crayfish at the first spot. But instead we found a lot more than what we were expecting to. Therefore we've spent a lot more time than what we were expecting to spend at this spot but it was all very well worth it. And you'll see why here in just a minute. All right, and so first up are these rosy side daces. Um, they did have some of their namesake rosy red on their sides when I first caught them, but they have since lost that color. Um, still a really cool fish. I'm glad to have seen this. Um, so this is actually my first time seeing this species. I thought I saw this in uh, North Carolina, but that is actually an undescribed smoky dace. So this is my first time seeing an actual rosy side dace. But I'm going to go ahead and let these go now and move on to the next fish. All right, and so here um, we have a northern stud fish. This thing is massive, like, there's my hand for scale. I had no idea a killifish got this big. But this is drop-dead gorgeous in breeding colors. A really phenomenal fish. Like, I am so impressed right now. Such an amazing fish. But anyways, I'm gonna go release this gorgeous fish now. So here is one last look at it. And there you go, straight to the bottom. 
but it is easy to see why darters are a favorite among people. A lot of them display these brilliant colors in the springtime. Like, look at that red and blue. And, but the colors on this fish are just outstanding. Th that is incredible. So happy to get these while they're still in color. But I am going to go ahead and let these uh, darters go and move on to the next fish now. And so here is an adult banded sculpin. I think there was a younger one earlier in the video. But I'm going to go ahead and let this fish go. And so here is a size comparison. Here's my hand. So this is an adult. Oh, okay. But now the release, bye bye, on to the next fish. And so here is a southern red bellied dace. Um, there were a lot more colorful ones in the creek that I really wish I could have been able to get, but still a very colorful fish with those yellow fins, um, even though it's not at its full potential but pretty cool, and I'm going to go let this go now. All right, so these look a lot different than the mad toms that you've seen in my previous videos. Um, these are saddled mad toms, and as you can see, they are a lot more vibrant, and they have a really cool pattern to them. Um, this is actually my first... Um, pattern mad tom usually i get the darker more bland looking species and the juvenile is especially boldly marked is right there but i'm gonna go let these go and show you some of the crayfish now all right so i'm gonna go ahead and let these mad toms go and they make themselves home in this kind of habitat. As you can see, their pattern um, very closely resembles the uh, gravel that they live in. So here they go. Just so they blend in so well. And so, like, if I was just walking along this creek, like, I could very easily miss that. So, here are some more saddle crayfish. And as you can see, they are a lot more visually appealing than the ones from the last location. You get that with the species. Some populations are very dull and a lot, and some others are a lot more contrasted. Um, this is one of the better looking populations, apparently. Um, the best looking population, I think, is actually a disjunct population in Alabama. Uh, I might revisit that spot sometime in the future, because that is a really cool population. But I'm going to go ahead and let these go and show you the next crayfish. That is going to be a wowzer. 
And now for the highlight of the trip, crayfish wise. This is a species that we were wishfully hoping to find out here, but we didn't have any good spots for them. So we actually found this um, population on our own. So that was really cool. This big one is a female. And this one right here with the regenerated right claw is a form one male. And this one right here is a form two male. And then this really nice blue one is a, another female. But just a very beautiful crayfish. I love seeing these blue species. And this one has some nice yellow and orange accents to go along with that cobalt blue. But these are linear cobalt crayfish. Um, that is their common name. Um, I usually uh, call crayfish by their scientific names. Um, so this is Cambarius gentrii. But um, about to go let these go. And so this is the habitat that they were in. Um, I'm actually kidding. They were not found here. There was one that was actually found in the creek right there, which was very shocking and surprising. But the rest were not found in this creek. I won't say where they were found at. But anyways, I'm probably going to wrap this video up here. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.